come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It was the 18th century playwright William Congreve who said it. See how love and murder will out. And although a quarter of a century intervened before they did, that's what this story is all about. Appropriately enough, it starts with the more violent of the two. Hold it, you! Please! That's the way you want it, Buster. Hey, what's going on? Okay, mister, you started it. Just no more sudden moves. And kill that heater. It's all right. Don't let the plane close for you. I'm police. Detective Joel and Barney, 45th. What is it, Barney? A hold up? No, no, nothing like that. It's just a screwy neighborhood kid trying to pull a fast one for kicks. Hey, Joel! What you want to do that for? You killed him. mystery drama, Murder Will Out, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mason Adams. In the city of New York, the police pride themselves on not being a police force, but a police service. Talk to any bedrock cop reach down through the layers of why he wanted to become a police officer, and you'll find that the great majority put service first before pay, benefits, or power. That goes for almost any police force through the country. Easy to malign these days, not so easy to praise, because the weight of the crime grass is hard to sustain. But above all, a cop is human, and that works on both sides of the line. Doors open. Come on in. Okay, Captain. Yeah, you bring the coffee in. It's right here. Thought you might want to want to chew me out first. Yeah, I shouldn't drink coffee. It ginches my ulcer. You get it? I'll chew you out better with an aching gut. Yes, sir. Any news on the Crocker kid? <laughs> Looks like he's going to make it. No thanks to you. The bullet went right through his chest, but managed to miss anything vital. How I don't know. You should be as accurate on the range. Yes, Captain. And a hell of a lot less trigger happy. You know that boy is only 16. He's six feet one, weighs 185, and he squeezed off two shots at me. How? He wasn't armed. It was nighttime. Streets badly lighted. Maybe he threw it away, but he had something in his hand, and I heard the shots. Maybe you heard a backfire. Oh, damn. Prune Danish again. Why can't I ever get a cheese Danish? You want to know what he had in his hand? Maybe it was a zip gun. He had a bottle of beer. All right, so he heisted it. But his old man was hung over, and he sent him over to Barney's pub, and the kid left it a bottle of suds. So it's against the law. With what we have to handle in this precinct, it's worth making a federal case over? It's kind of looking that way for me, isn't it? Well, a couple of citizens' committees brewing, some pressure from the newsboys, and unfortunately, it's... It's a good story for them if they start digging up old bodies. No, oh, I, I, I didn't mean that the way it came out. I know, Captain Stark. Well, you should. Sal was my best friend. We rode a squad car together for six years. And when he... Well, I swear, they... They fry this stuff. They boil the beans first, and then they fry them in dishwater. Call this coffee? You're going to break me? Well, I... I gotta do something, Joe. I, I just can't sit still. You fired at him, and he wasn't on. Yeah, there were two shots. I heard them. A truck backfired. Oh, I know how it looked, Joe. You were tired, just coming up out of the subway. You see a guy on the lam. You, you tell him to freeze, and he stops, turns, and it looks like he laid two on the line for you. The cop has a right to protect himself. Reflex action. I pulled my gun. But you didn't have to pull the trigger. You weren't hit, Joe. I should wait to be? You were in plain clothes. The bartender says you never even identified yourself as police before you fired. Okay, Captain. You want my badge? I don't. I understand. I, I don't approve, but I understand. What do you want me to do? Hold back like my pop and get my brains blown out? Oh, that's the whole trouble. That's what I mean when I say I understand. If Sal had moved as fast as you... Same maybe... deal. My pop got it right in front of that same lousy gin mill. Now, wait a minute. You were only five years old when it happened. It wasn't that simple. 
You study the file. I don't and... have to. I got it all from my mom all those years growing up, and I know the file like I know my own name. Fine. I, I, I... All right, all right. Knock it off. You, you think if we'd had enough of a case, I wouldn't have nailed that Leslie Peavy? First off, we couldn't find him, and second off, there wasn't enough case against him as it stood to warrant anything beyond an APB. He got away. Sure. He'll let this crumb bum kill my pop, one of your own, 25 years ago, and the guy is still running loose. I'm not going to get caught up in this old argument, Joe. Except this far. It's your obsession that poises you not only as a police officer, but as a man. It's held you back your whole career. And now it's pretty near ended. You asked if I wanted your badge. No. No, I don't. But I think you need some time to think over just what you want to be. The the Avenger or, or a real-life cop who knows his job isn't guns and shootouts, but good, solid service to the public. You know, I, I could suspend you. Okay, okay, go ahead. I'll take that from you because of my old friend. Now, instead of suspending you, I'm suggesting that... You got a lot of vacation time coming, like at least a month. You can start it today. That's the same thing as suspension. Not quite. And I want one thing in return. What? I want you to forget you're a cop for the next four weeks and try to get to know yourself, Joe. Wake up. Wake up, wipe the slate, lock your gun in a drawer. Learn to be a real human being. Okay, that's it. You're off duty as of right now. I left the office choked with bile right up to the back of my tongue. I shouldn't have been mad at the old man, but I was. He said he understood, didn't he? But he didn't. It's my private war. I got as many citations as I have call down, censures. So maybe I'll never make it beyond Detective Third Grade. Who cares? If I can't get the guy who rubbed out my father, I'll get enough to make up for it. And thinking all this, I'm back at the stop order book, running through its well-thumbed pages, back to that screwball name listed as having a warrant out on him even after 25 years. Leslie Peavy. And suddenly, I know what I'm going to do with that vacation I don't want. <laughs> Morning, Green. Hi, Joe. You may have XB31407, huh? Again? You know, Officer Green, you ought to take a tip from your predecessor, old Bunky. He just learned not even to ask when I came in, but went straight to the files and got it. Okay, but don't get so uptight, Detective Third Grade Lombardi. I'll get your file for you. What you need it for beats me. You've seen it often enough, you ought to know it by heart. Here you are, XB3-1407. Thanks. For the file, not the smart talk. What are you breaking out on spots for? Oh, uh, did that kid you wing by it? Yup, he's gonna make it. Oh, thank the Lord. Maybe. Maybe he wasn't up to anything this time, but he will be. I know the type. I can smell him. I can feel him. And someday, maybe some other cop will just give him enough of a break to get his ticket canceled. Because that time, it won't be a beer bottle in his hand. It'll be real heat. Saturday special, hideout gun, anything that shoots bullets and kills. What's the matter, Joe? Did they set you down for what happened? No. Well, then how come you're so bitter? I mean, well, it's none of my business, but you're a good-looking young guy, and I know you got a sense of humor. Catch you off guard, you can be real nice. How come you get so little out of it? Why don't you have a girl, Joe? Why aren't you married? You know what's in this file, Green? Well, it's 25 years old. I haven't caught up on all my reading yet. Well, I'll fill you in. You see, my pop, my pop trusted people. He gave him a break anyways. So one night he's coming home, same as I was last night, out of the same lousy subway by that same lousy gym well. And he stops in for a beer. And, 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 and there's nobody else there except Barney Saunders, the same bartender that came out last night. And, and this, this Leslie Peavy, see... Petey has a gun, see, and he's holding up the joint. So my pop, see, he was a uniformed cop, but he was off duty in civvies. He pulls his own gun and he tells the Peavy crumbun to drop his. The guy turns around and before my pop gets a chance to do anything more, Peavy kicks a stool into his gut 
and he takes out an air on the lamp. And Pop follows and sees him heading for the corner, and he yells at these police at a stop. He fires one warning shot in the air, and this, this heist artist turns and squeezes one off that takes my pop right in the... It's okay, Joe. I understand. Look, why don't you let it go, Joe? You're going to carry a monkey like that on your back all your life? Anyway, how are you going to find him after he's buried himself successfully all these years? I just, I just, I just need a few things out of the fire here first. And then I'm betting that I can find him and I can get him identified. How? I have a hunch by now he's safe enough to have surfaced somewhere. And with a name like Leslie Peavy, he shouldn't be that hard to get a fix on. I had copies made of the old faded snapshot of Peavy in the file and of his birth certificate. Also, the name and address of the one other witness besides the bartender. Then I drove out to the airport terminal at Kennedy to follow up my idea on how to get a lead on him. There were four PVs in the New York, the Queens, the Bronx, and the Brooklyn books, none in Staten Island. I eliminated those fast. Could I talk to Mr. PV, please? He's no longer at this number. Well, do you know where I might reach him? I see. Well, just to make sure, do you happen to recall his first name? I see. Do you recall if he was very tall or short? Very short. Thanks. That wouldn't be the man that I'm looking for. I see. There is no Mr. Peavy. You're a spinster lady. Your name's Peavy. Thank you so much. Uh, be- beg pardon? Oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. You're not on radio. Sorry to hear that. Recently? Are you just leaving to enter the body now? I see. And I, I did get the name right. That was Leslie P. John Bramble, P.V. No, no, I'm I'm happy to say he's not the man that I'm looking for. Well, I hadn't thought it would be that easy. I took out my notebook and pencil and started through the directors. 138 of them. I took my list. I went home to start running up a phone bill. On the 11th, Miami, Florida, I hit pay dirt. This is George. What can I do for you this fine, bright day? Is this PV's auto repair? It sure is, brother. I wonder if I could talk to your boss. Oh, Leslie ain't here right now. Off visiting at the hospital. Uh, back tomorrow. Try then. Leslie? Leslie PV? Yeah, that's the name. Excuse me, but we're busy. So I made a blind cast and came up lucky with my fish. Now all I had to do was land him. A quarter of a century, and suddenly, with the effort and small expense of a few phone calls, a man buried in anonymity has turned up. It seems almost too easy. Or to bring up another metaphor, first catch your hair, then skin him. This is only the beginning of Joe's compulsive quest for vengeance. I'll return shortly with Act Two. There's more than vindication involved in Joe Lombardi's search for the man who killed his father. That happened 25 years ago, and time is supposed to heal all wounds but not the one that flaws Detective Joe Lombardi, unless he can rid himself of the specter who rides his shoulders, legs locked about his chest, like the legendary old man of the sea. I don't know how they handled the investigation at the time. I was five years old and collecting baseball cards. All I knew this time, I was going to prepare a foolproof case before I made my move. I was a fool thinking it was that easy. First place I went naturally was to the pub to talk to Barney. You know who I am, Barney? Sure. Barney, you knew this Leslie Peavy that shot my old man. Knew him? Not all that much. Maybe I seen him a time or two in a bar before the night he tried to rob me, but uh, don't get me wrong. 
He was no uh, habitual. Well, but you could recognize him, like uh, in this picture. Yeah, Detective Lombardi, come on. Yeah, maybe 25 years ago he looked something like that. Uh, I couldn't make it positive. Well, you made him then, all right? Well, sure. It was fresh in my mind. I did what I had to do as a citizen then. <laughs> I ain't going to be on tap anymore. You know, some tomorrow's my 65th birthday and my last day here. I'm retiring. I'm going to take my Social Security and go sit on my rump in St. Pete, Florida. And I won't think I'm going to be able to identify for sure are the Mets every spring. And even then, I'm going to need a scorecard. I don't recognize nothing so good anymore. Look, all I'm asking is for you to hang around a few days, maybe, till I bring him back and to get an ident on him from you. Oh, sure. And if you do, then you book him. He goes to trial. I either hang around months or you drag me back from Florida. Nah, forget it. Tomorrow night I do my last trick by 12 midnight, and it stopped the world. I'm getting off. Why can't you let the past be? Don't you think I want to? But first, I've got to nail a guy that cut my pop down. Why don't you let sleeping dogs lie? Because they're not asleep. Well, then count me out. I don't get you, Barney. My mom always told me you were a real friend of my father's. Well, I, 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 I knew him. He, he was a good cop. But I didn't owe him nothing. I mean, uh, he was a customer and I was the bartender uh, like that. How come you suddenly have a stake to retire, Barney? I thought the bookies had you nailed to the wall. Well, you know how it is. You lose a little, you win a little. Not the word I get. You wouldn't... You wouldn't be running a little numbers bank out of here. No, 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 nothing like that. Look, I'm 65. I got my Social Security, just like any other citizen. <sighs> okay, I won't press you, Barney. Well, thanks for the favor. Well, now you can do me one in return. How's that? St. Petersburg. It's not so far from where I think I found my man. I'll pay your fare by limousine if you want it. For you to come over and tell me whether I'm right or wrong. Oh, no. I... Uh... I already told you I wouldn't know him uh, from the next guy, and, and, and I ain't getting involved. I got a lot less future than you left, and that's all I care about. Oh, come on, get out of my life. I walked away from Barney so frustrated, I wanted to put my fist through a wall. Why would he want to back down on such a simple request? Something about his attitude, the way he wouldn't look me in the eye, the defensive anger, all of them signs to any good detective that he was covering up something. But what? And why? There's no way I could sweat it out of him. He hadn't broken any law I know of. He had his rights. But I had to forget about Barney for the moment. There was one more witness to go. Sunnyside, Long Island, a street that was a row of two family houses. One of them was where the cab driver lived who saw my father get shot, if he was still alive. Yeah? I'm Detective Lombardi, 4056. Oh, now, here, here are my credentials. Nothing to be scared of, Buster. Oh, I don't see how they could be. We ain't done nothing wrong. Of course not. Just want to ask you a few questions. I called earlier, but there was no one home. You know, I just got back from work. If it's about the Skylar girl getting mugged and raped, we don't know nothing it about, about it. that. First, is this the home of Mr. Louis Bratman? Yeah, I'm his son. He's a cab driver? Well, he was. He's retired now. I'd like to ask him a few questions. Well, he ain't home. He's out taking a walk. I wish he wouldn't stay out so long. The way things are, I don't feel safe if he isn't home before dark. And then he don't know enough to... What kind of questions? Well, something that happened a long time ago. He saw a man get shot. Oh, oh, you mean the cop. Oh, sure, Pops told me about that. I was just a kid when it happened, of course. Yeah, me too. And the cop was my father. Oh, well, ain't that a shame. Yeah, but they never found the guy who done it, did they? No, not... Well, I mean, I think we may... We may have turned him up. I... You see, I wanted your father to help me identify him. I mean, if he can, after all of these years. Well, I'm afraid he couldn't help you out. Well, he may not have changed so much. Well, maybe not, but, uh... My father has... Yeah, that's him coming now. What? You mean you mean the man with with a cane? Yeah, glaucoma, they call it. it. Happened five years ago. First they thought they could save one eye, but it didn't work out. He's stone blind. So that left it squarely up to me. 
I knew the captain wouldn't back me up, not without witnesses to make a case. So it looked like I was going to get that vacation after all. I had to go to Florida, to Miami. But first, there was something else I had to dig out of the files. I thought you were supposed to be on vacation. Just about to start. Something I had to check out here first. You uh, taking that monkey along for a companion? Huh? The one on your back. The one that ought to have been buried in that musty old file you can't keep your nose out of. Green, I know you mean well, but butt out, huh? There's only one way I'll ever bury that monkey, and that's... I, I, I get your message, Joe. I'll, I'll mind my own business. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get my own messages. Board file, Officer Green speaking. Yes, sir. Sure. Green's preoccupation with the phone call was just what I needed. Give me that. I took the file out of his side riffle, threw it quickly, and got out the old bench warrant that Judge Arnold had issued. The judge was long dead and the warrant no longer valid, but I had this notion that I might have to use it. By the time Green was through with his phone call, I had the file back on the counter. He took it and put it away without checking it. Right, sir. No, that was quick. You all through? Sure. Okay, now, just let me put this away. Sergeant Croft's got a rush order. See you, Joe. Aren't you going to wish me luck? Uh, vacation? What else could you have? Maybe you're right, Green. I sure hope it turns out that way. Joe, what are you doing here? Didn't I tell you I didn't want to see you for a month, that you're on a vacation? I'm heading for Florida in a couple of hours. I just stopped by to pick up a couple of things. Where about you going? Oh, I figured, like, maybe Miami Beach. Huh. Miami Beach. Yeah, your father and me once had a trip down there to pick up a prisoner. Hey, before we were both married, that was. And <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's better forgotten now. Point was, we made a good friend. I kept up with him. Sam Williams, he's sheriff of Dade County now. You need any help or get in trouble, you... But you're not gonna get in any trouble. Not if I can help it, Captain Stark. But I just maybe might, could use a little help. What kind of help? Well, you know where to go, what to see. Oh, oh sure. Glad well, you call on Sam, tell him you're kind of like a son to me, and he'll down there make you a present of the whole state. Incidentally, that uh, Santana kid is off the critical list. He's going to be 100%. Now, I've talked with the deputy inspector and the inspector, too, and well, you won't be busted. You'll get off with just a censure if... You keep your nose clean from now on, you get me? I get you, sir. Well, you go on down there, boy, and let the sun not only get some tan on you, but also shine inside and and sort of open you up, huh? Give yourself a chance to start living and stop holding a grudge against the world. He was such a right guy, I hated to hold out on him. This gut hunch warned me that he'd never go for what I had in mind. Still, that Sheriff Williams might come in handy to keep me from going all the way. I didn't want to settle it outside the law. But to make up for my father, I was ready to. On the plane, speeding south, I closed my eyes and I... I tried to imagine what Leslie Peavy would look like now. And just how I'd react when I came face to face... The guy who put a bullet through my father's head. Thinking about it, I was conscious, very conscious of the empty shoulder holster and my gun checked out with the pilot. By the time we landed, it wouldn't be empty anymore. I'd have my gun back with no license to use it in the state of Florida. Which didn't mean that I wouldn't. I took a bus that turned on Collins Avenue away from the beach. I ran a good piece before the driver nodded to me to get off. Peavy's auto repair shop had a gas station with it. And they could have used some paint. A couple of cars on the left and a bald-headed guy with a permanently peeling red freckled scalp was pumping gas. I walked over to him as the car he was servicing pulled away. Yes, sir. Hello and welcome to Miami. Want to be gas, oil, wipe your windshield, or are you looking for the men's room? A comic. <laughs> Just try to keep the days bright. Call me George. What can I do for you? Why to talk to the boss? The Leslie Peavy, right? Right. And I wouldn't blame you for wanting to. To find a boss right there in the office. Just march on in. I got me a grease job I gotta finish. The moment was here at last. I could feel a knot in my stomach. 
the gun under my arm as hot as if I'd left it out in the sun to bake. I headed on in to meet a name I'd known all my life. As long as I could remember. What is it Detective Joe Lombardi expects to do when he meets the man who killed his father? Try to take him back to New York at gunpoint to stand trial with no witnesses left to appear against him? Or just simply put a bullet through his head with that same gun he has no license to carry in Florida? I'll return shortly with Act Three. For a moment, Joe Lombardi stops at the glass door, looking into the office. There's a small, trim, blonde girl sitting working over some books at a desk. The rest of the office is beyond his sight line round the corner. He hesitates because of the girl. There's something about her that somehow dissipates his sense of mission. A sudden, aching longing that if this were only a vacation, this is the girl he would want to meet on it. A completely irrational thought, but strong enough to force him to make an effort to thrust it aside and enter. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Yes, I, uh... I'm looking for a Leslie Peavy. Not anymore, you aren't. But what does that mean? It's like a joke. You're not looking for, you're looking at. Uh, Well, you, you mean, you mean, you're the boss? If you mean, do I run this little tourist trap, that's me. But you... you can't be. (laughs) Haven't you ever heard of women's lives? That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm looking for a man named Leslie. For some reason, I seem to have caught you clear off base, Mr. Joe Lombardi. Mr. Lombardi. But I hate to tell you this. For a pretty good-looking guy, you look kind of funny with your mouth wide open. That's beside the point. (laughs) You got any proof that you're Leslie Peavy? Sure. Have you got any proof you've a right to question it? These. My credentials. Oh. Badge 703, Detective Joseph Lombardi, Precinct 45, New York City. It's not a very good picture of you. Maybe. (gasps) I wouldn't say that this is a very good picture of you either. Oh, I quite agree. First of all, it's old enough to be a daguerreotype. And second, it's a man. What? Oh. Oh, what are you stopping for? Well, this is an old picture of... Oh. Did you say your name was Lombardi? I said... Oh, no. Oh, no, not now. Not after all these years. Why? Was your father a policeman, too? That's right. I think that maybe you and I better go and talk somewhere. Why not right here? Oh, I can think of plenty of reasons. I never knew about you and your father till a couple of years ago, Detective. My mother died when I was born, and I've just always grown up thinking that my last name was Chalmers. Chalmers? Well, that was my mother's maiden name, as I found out. How did you find out? Well, things were kind of rough for Dad and me while I was growing up. I never understood why he couldn't get better jobs. He had the ability, but he seemed so afraid of people, and... We always lived in such small towns that a man just had to take what he could get. When did you learn your real name? About six years ago. My dad had a cousin who owned a gas station or auto repair, whatever you want to call it, and he died and he left it to my father. That's when he... Well, that's when I first learned that my real name was Peavy. I mean, in order to make it legal and everything, my dad couldn't inherit without telling who he really was. You mean he had to produce his birth certificate, things like that? Yes, of course. Well, I brought you here. It's the only quiet place that I know in the area. And still be able to look out to the sea. I wish I could appreciate it with you. I really mean that. But I can't stop for things like that now. Well, what are you here for, Detective? To try to drag my father back to try... He killed my father. Why wouldn't I? After all these years, don't you think he's suffered enough? After all these years, don't you think my mom and I have suffered enough? This is one of my most favorite spots in the world. The waves rolling in, the gulls. And right down below, in that cove, I found my first starfish. 
I don't get what you're saying. I know. I just wish I could have brought you here under different circumstances. So, Mr. Sleuth, nose to the ground, nostrils wide, mouth panting, you have now tracked down the prey. I wish you joy of it. Now what? Now I'm going to do what you want. I'm going to take you to the arch criminal and see just how you're going to arrange for his arrest. What are we doing here? This is what is known as a hospital for chronic cases. We are going to visit my father in the terminal ward. What's the matter with him? He has cancer. Incurable. Don't be surprised that he doesn't speak in the most dulcet tones. His larynx is affected, too. I thought maybe I'd made it. I, I cheated you long enough. So I'd be gone and my daughter wouldn't get hurt. It isn't that easy. You killed my father, didn't you? Yes. Mr. Peavy, I'm nobody wants to kick a man when he's down. But my father, all my life I wanted to make up for him that someone took him out for no reason and wrecked my life and my mother's. Your father was a fine policeman. Right, Detective? No one finer. So leave it that way. Now, wait a minute, Dad. Just leave it that way, Leslie. How about you, Detective? You gonna let it lay? Why should I? Because nothing you could do could make me pay more than I already have for that stupid act. I might as well have been in jail for 35 years. One good thing was my daughter here, Leslie. The only person you can hurt is her. Give her a break, please. I can't. I'm a cop. It's my duty. I'm not going to take this. Not for myself. I I don't care. But for you, Dad. Tell him the truth. I can't. He wouldn't believe me anyway. Well, then I will. Listen to me, Mr. Tough Detective. My father shot your father in self-defense. He tried to kill him first. Sorry, Miss Peavy, it won't wash. My father fired a warning shot in the air. Oh, the hell he did. There were two witnesses. They saw the whole thing. And they lied. Why would they lie? Because everybody knew about your father, that he was trigger-happy. All right, that is enough. I don't blame you for trying to protect your own, but I don't take that from anyone. How could you know anyway? Because I told her, of course... When I had to tell her my real name. Which brings us round full circle again. Okay. Dad, Dad, you're in pain. Let me get the nurse. Uh, Not for a moment. Let's try to get this straight first. What really happened that night? I was a pretty wild kid. Nothing real bad, but I, I wasn't always, like they say... On the side of the law. The, the night it happened, I, I i was at the time running a little book. No connections, just private penny. And one of my studies was Barney Son. I spare you the agony his daughter and I went through listening to that tortured story from a dying man. I can tell it in fewer words with less effort. What Peavy claimed was that Barney Saunders was into him for about 75 bucks. Peavy had had a couple of drinks that night. He went in to collect. Now, Barney claimed that he didn't have the dough. He opened the cash register to prove it. And there was a gun unregistered in there. And to throw a scare into Barney, Peavy lifted it and threatened if he didn't pay up, he'd have him rubbed out. And that's when my pop came in. 
Peavy recognized him. Barney pulled the fake hold-up line, and Peavy lost his head and took it on the lamb. In his story, when Pop squeezed off, the shadow went right by his ear, and he could hear it hit metal somewhere in ricochet. With sheer reflex action, it turned back, fire in return, knowing, as he claimed, my father's reputation. I wouldn't even have listened to the story except for two things. I swear... I never meant it. I never fired a gun in my life. Didn't even know how to aim it. If you were all that innocent, how come you didn't hang around to defend yourself? You kidding? You know what happens to a cop killer? What can I prove? And when I read in the papers that Barney and, and the cab driver lied... I knew I was cooked. I, I took it on the lamp. But just the same. What do you want to do? Kill him yourself with your questions? Can't you face the truth when you hear it? It isn't all that easy. So what do you plan to do? First of all, I've got to make a phone call. Captain Stark here. Captain, it's Joe Lombardi from Florida. Oh. I, uh, I found PV, Captain. But he's dying of cancer. Mm. Can't even count on a week to live. So let sleeping dogs lie, Joe. Maybe, sir. After two questions. Was my father as trigger happy as you think I am? Why do you ask? That's the second question. I always had a notion you dragged your feet some on the case. Was it because that first shot Pop fired wasn't straight in the air? Now, Joe, we all make decisions and, well, we make mistakes. Sal was my friend. I wanted to protect his memory. And remember, I had no sure proof. Just about where PV was standing when he fired, there was a lamp post with a fresh scar on the paint right down to the steel. Could have been made by a bullet, but it ricocheted, of course, so, well, who's to tell? We never found that bullet. Thanks, Captain. Now, Joe, wait a minute. What are you going to do? I don't know. Captain, I just plain don't know. Leslie? Oh, why don't you leave me alone? I got something to tell you. Well, I have something to tell you. He's dead. Now are you satisfied? No. What are you going to do? Hound me? No, no. I'm going to. I'm going to drive you home if you'll let me. Oh, I don't know. All right, what's the difference? I don't think I could see to drive anyway. What? What made you drive back here? I don't know. Good good place for confession, maybe. Confession? I'm just like my father was. I can see that now. Oh, I had a big excuse to get back at the world, but that wasn't really me. Well, who was it? I was a kid trying to live up to a kind of idol that my mother built, and who, heaven help her, wanted revenge and made me the way to get it. Maybe I don't blame her too much. She didn't mean it, but to suddenly... Find out after all these years that my pop was. All right, all right, Jim. I'm sorry. I don't know what. It's all right. Let it go. We both have to get it out of our systems. I had to when I first found out about my father. I mean, who he really was and what he'd done. If it hadn't been for the cancer, I... well, that part of it's all over now. I don't know how to apologize. Grown man acting like that. Oh, you were just trying to get rid of the little boy. Like I had to get rid of the little girl. We both... We both had bad luck with fathers. Does that make us two of a kind? I don't know. What are you going to do now, Joe? Well, I still have over three weeks of vacation time coming. Maybe if I stay down here, could... Um... <clears throat> could we see each other? I guess we could. I have no one else. Me neither. 
Leslie Peavy and Joe Lombardi. <laughs> the last two people I ever figured could make a deal. Wait a minute. Let's not rush things. Who's rushing anything? <laughs> We've got three whole weeks. It took a while longer than three weeks for Leslie and Joe to iron out the past, but they did. And as we quoted William Congreve in the beginning, not only murder will out, but eventually so did love. I'll be back shortly. Would you know a workaholic if you saw one? Will airfare restrictions leave you grounded? Can the state where you live affect the state of your health? Is it too late to make money in the unified Europe of 1992? You'd know the answers to all those questions if you'd been reading the Wall Street Journal, America's leading daily business publication. Every business day, the journal tells you what's news and who's news in big business, small business, in real estate, marketing, technology, and the law. The Wall Street Journal gives you all the business news you need in three easy-to-read sections organized to save you time. Subscribe now to the Wall Street Journal and take advantage of this special introductory offer. 12 weeks, just $29.75. Only $29.75 for 12 weeks of the journal. Call toll-free 800-231-1800. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-231-1800 now. Since 1941, whenever our troops needed a little bit of home, the USO was there. We have also have regard for you boys from Betty Grable. Today, nearly 5 million military personnel and their families serving around the world still need to know that wherever they are, they're not forgotten. The USA still needs the USO. The USO needs you. One bone of contention before they were married was whether to run the gas and auto repair shop or have Joe return to the force. It was Leslie who finally convinced him to. A wise woman. She knew the best way to atone for all the past was for Joe to become the kind of police officer he always should have been. Servant of the people, not an avenging force. It's Lieutenant Joe Lombardi now. And his name stands top of the list to replace his old friend and surrogate father, Captain Stark, just as soon as he retires. Our cast included Mason Adams, Marion Seldes, Robert Maxwell, Leon Johnny, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I was blind for 17 years with the use of a white cane. Only two years ago, I was reading Braille. Today... I drive my car with confidence on the streets of Newcastle, Delaware, my hometown. My name is Rita Tucker. Regaining my sight was a miracle in my life. But in eye centers across America, corneal transplant surgery to restore sight is routinely performed. More than 36,000 corneal transplants were performed in the United States last year alone. But blind people still wait in darkness for lack of eye donors. So I urge you to pledge your eyes for surgery and research. Give the gift of sight and tell your family and friends of your wishes. Write I Bank Association of America, Post Office Box 90962, Washington, D.C., 20090. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>